You know, we like this stuff, uh, the four of us here, but even we agree that it feels like there's a 24-7 campaign every day, the covering of it, but there is a definite palpable buzz already for the next presidential race, and it's with some familiar names, certainly last names, when you're talking Clinton and Bushes. Jeb Bush, certainly in the news quite a, quite a bit lately, and, um, but the question is, how much of an appetite for another Bush, let alone the former Florida governor, is there? Um, well, he certainly seems to be putting out feelers that he does have wants here for 2016. The prospect, though, would have some challenges. He's being outpolled by more conservative Republicans, like Rand Paul, for example. He's behind Hillary Clinton, even in his home state of Florida in a recent poll this week. And he's viewed more negatively than his brother was, two-plus years from Election Day. And even his mother, Barbara Bush, has said that she feels he's imminently qualified, but that she hopes he doesn't run has since, though, softened on that stance. I, I, I guess, Scott, um, listen, I've heard him speak on issues of immigration, whatever. I, I think he's probably the most politically talented Bush that there is, and I think that he does speak to more moderate wing of the party. But why is there just a lack of, you know, excitement about a Bush candidacy is it the last name or is it they say they hey we tried that with Mitt Romney two years ago um, been there done that why is he not generating more buzz than he is well I think it's it's complicated but I think part of it is is that people aren't ready to go back to Bush we've had two of them um, and I, they don't know Jeb Jeb is a very good candidate he would be my candidate and, and my, my choice uh, but he he doesn't have the name recognition to pull himself away from his family and I think they're tired of the Bushes. It's different for Hillary for Even example. Even Republicans? Some Republicans still. And forgetting the Tea Party and all, yeah. you know, and forget those factions. Um, I think they're still concerned that we need something new, something vibrant, something different. I think Jeb in a lot of ways brings that but people don't know him I don't think. He doesn't have that reputation. Is obviously the biggest challenge is making through the gauntlet of the primary and then being enough of a, a, a to be a legitimate moderate to actually have a chance in a general. I've always thought, hey, Republicans, whatever the criticism was, they at least looked at Mitt Romney, looked at the people on the stage and said, he's got the best shot to win, you know? Um, is there a consensus they're tired of losing, forget about making points, or you can't get through a primary nowadays without hewing so far right you got no shot in a general? Well, I think what we're seeing, and I'm not an expert, across the nation, however, is that the Tea Party does not have the influence they had even two years ago. And I think what's happening is that, that sense that we can't simply rely on, you know, on the ends of the, of the, of the bandwidth, if you will. Uh, Republicans, if they want to win, and, and this is carefully, yeah. has to be carefully thought out because conventions are difficult, but if they want to win, they're going to have to come at some of these issues like immigration, et cetera, and be more moderate. And that's why Jeb is, has got, he's dealt with some of those issues, and he's got some of that uh, to go. Uh, so I think, I think you're right, but I also believe that there's a, there's a real change going on in the Republican Party, and it's nationwide. Well, if he were to run, and let's say he were the nominee, it's very conceivable we may have a familiar ring uh, to the race, at least with political dynasties. As I'm sure you may have heard, former Secretary of State and New York Senator Hillary Clinton is considering another run at the White House. Before she was a politician, Hillary, first lady, married to, yeah, you know, him. Um, and there have been long rumors that their daughter Chelsea may in fact enter politics one day. Neither the Bushes nor the Clintons though can match the Kennedy family name when it comes to political dynasties in the states. Their clan including one president, three presidential candidates, three U.S. senators, five members of Congress, two ambassadors, an attorney general, lieutenant governor, and a mayor. Kennedy has also held seats in Congress for 63 straight years. I don't know Andrew, I, to me Listen, for every argument that there may be Bush fatigue, I think the Clinton name helps uh, more than hurts Hillary Clinton now, no? Well, I think that's because uh, the former president is seen more favorably than former President Bush is seen, especially by members of their own party. I, political dynasties, I, w I would think, tend to play well, especially among the base. You've had a positive experience with Jack Kennedy, so you're more likely to be invested in Bobby Kennedy or Ted Kennedy. Or, or whoever the next Kennedy may be. Bill Clinton's still very popular, and that helps Hillary Clinton going forward and would theoretically help Chelsea Clinton as well. Uh, you saw, 
I think it's a, the, the next generation of Bush, Prescott Bush, I yeah. think was just elected to a statewide office in Texas or maybe a candidate. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. land commissioner. Uh, again, uh, in a base-friendly environment, the, the name and the dynasty tends to help. But again, I think the aftertaste of George W. Bush may be a, a significant, and I think a, a too damaging an obstacle for Jeb. I mean, you look at entertainment and whatever else. The, we love to build people up then tear them down. But I, 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 I've been on the show. Before. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, but I guess I'm curious is, the name brand and the instant recognition, do Americans still like the idea There's of always a royalty in every society, and these families represent that. Um, I do think both the points that my colleagues made are, have validity, and that is that we're too close to George Bush and the f financial meltdown and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan for the brand to be where it ought to be. It's, I think you also ought to go a little careful about this notion of Bush as a moderate. It's a it's an insight to where the Republican Party is that on immigration, where he is a moderate, he's, that seems to tag him across the board. He's not a moderate on abortion. He's not a moderate on tax cuts and, and, and government spending. He's not a moderate on most other things. The Republican Party has been lurched to the right, and even a guy who knows better, like I, I, I think Jeb does, is going to have a very hard time d doing anything with the base where it is. I think the Republican Party is going to take a licking in 2016 and then either literally disappear or reinvent itself, as Rand Paul says. But we're in the midterms and we're up against a break here where they very conceivably could take back the Senate um, and even have more gains in the House here. So it's a, I understand one's a national election I and skipped, the other one's I skipped 2014. I figured you did. <laughs> okay, coming up next, we take a closer look at the drugs that were used in that botched execution in Oklahoma and why it is causing concern within the state governments across the country. And trust me on this one, this to me isn't just about if you're pro or con on death penalty. How these drugs were gotten and why we still don't even know what was in that cocktail, the answer as to why will, I think, shock. We'll have that when we come back.